there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna take a look at the September Smart Art Box. And, um, well, let's just get right into it. This video is brought to you by smartartbox.com. You can click the link in the video description to subscribe for your own box of surprise art supplies every month if you want. And what do we have? I don't wanna look at this yet because that ruins the surprise of what the supplies are. We don't wanna ruin our supplies surprise. And all right, what do we got here? We have got semi-moist metallic watercolor in a, wow, really jumbo pan. Look at that. That would be pretty to do some like accents, metallic accents on things. It looks like we have a copper and we have like an icy blue color. Gorgeous. We have got a black fine liner, a Stabilo 0 .80, 0 0.88 fine, 0 0.4 black fine liner. We have got a tiny number two Da Vinci brush. We have got a set of eight Prang watercolors. Oh my gosh, I haven't used these since I taught summer camp um, back in my 20s. So that's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a blast from the past. And this comes with the number six um, white hair brush, usually called a white sable. It's a synthetic brush, um, but that's nice. They used to come with um, like, a, like a pony hair brush, which, was very um, kind of sheddy and floppy, so I'm glad that they switched over to a synthetic there. Just it'll last somebody longer, and if somebody's beginning and brand new, it'll be a little bit better to, for them to have. Uh, this is a Stabilo Carbothello pastel pencil in white. I've never used these pastel pencils, but I've heard really good things about them. And oh, this is the uh, this is the premium supply that comes in the box. This is and I've never used this before. This is the 500 series Strathmore Ready Cut watercolor paper, and it's 100% cotton. I didn't realize that. Um, I didn't realize Strathmore made like their Ready Cut paper was, so I'm kind of excited about that because I've never used it. I've used the 400 series, which is um, another one of their wood pulp papers, and it's very good. Much better than the yellow covered 300 series, so I'm excited to try this. I've also tried some of the, like their um, fine art papers, like their uh, Aquarius, which is like part cotton, part synthetic, and I've liked that, but um, I'm really excited to try this. So let's take a peek at the brochure, and we have Art Nouveau is the, um, the art movement that you will be studying in this brochure, so if you're doing this at home and you're using this as part of like your homeschool curriculum, you can learn about that art movement. Um, and that is what the project will be on the back. So you can follow along with that. Um, I thought it would be kind of fun to use these to do a mixing chart because I did a, I, whenever I'm trying to figure out a palette for something, a lot of times, especially a limited palette, I will do a mixing chart, see what my options are with the colors I've selected. And um, I was showing some of my mixing charts the other day during a live stream where I painted the leaf with chrome oxide green because I've always hated that color, but I, I figured I would make it useful. And um, some people asked me if I could show how to do a mixing chart. So that's what we're gonna do today. Um, and let's do it right on this good paper, even though it kind of like, it kind of, <laughs> Honestly, I usually use really cheap paper for doing my swatches and mixing charts, so it's kind of like painful for me to use really nice paper for this, but um, but I want to use what's in the box, and I think that will be kind of uh, a kind of fun um, fun example. So on one side of the paper, you're going to notice is a beautiful kind of random mold made surface. It looks like a mold made surface. On the other side, you're going to see more of like a um, uh, uniform surface. It kind of looks like the aqua bee paper there on the side. I'm going to flip it so that I have this beautiful, more um, random surface. I'm not going to tape it down because I'm not going to be wetting the whole thing at once. I'm just going to set it down like that. And then I am going to use some skinny tape just to kind of make some, um, make a grid here. And this is some washi tape. I know uh, I've been seeing people do do charts and stuff like that and using this really skinny blue tape, which is like a painter's tape, but I don't have that. Um, but I do have this and I never use this washi tape on any projects because it doesn't stick well enough to really use for projects. So I figured it will work really well for this. So, um, yeah, so I think it will look kind of cool. I think I saw Denise Snowden um, from in liquid color do this and I thought well that looks really cool so but I know other people have done it too so it's just uh it's just it looks really neat all right so what I'm going to do is make a grid that since I have eight colors here I'm going to make an eight by eight grid and I'll be right back after I've got that taped down 
actually, I thought I'd sh kind of show you how I do divide this up because I'm not measuring. Um, so what I will do is if I know I need eight by eight, what I'll do is I will kind of, I left a little, little column here so I can put my color names, right? And so what I would do to make this so I could kind of evenly portion it out without measuring is I would say, okay, look at this space in here. That's where my chart's going to be. I'm going to divide it in half with a piece of tape. Just going to keep it as straight as I can. If it's not perfect, I'm seriously not going to lose any sleep over it. So then what I'll do is I'll divide this in two, divide each of these sections in two. So it's pretty even. I find when I when I go half and half and half, it's easy for me to divide things up. So then I'll divide each of these spots up in two. Of course, it's a great idea not to run your fingers all over your paper because if you have any lotion on, you could end up uh, making like little resists on there. There we go. And then I'll, I'll repeat that whole thing going this way as well. So I'll be able to really easily divide this up into, into eight sections both ways. So hopefully that makes sense. I think it will when we come back and I show you how the grid is all laid down. Okay, now we've got this side divided into eights. Now what I'm going to do is go this way and just eyeball it, try to get between the bottom of my paper and that top piece of tape that I put right there and repeat the same process and then I'm going to end up with my grid that I need. So when you're doing these charts, I don't recommend that you do like a set of 24. I would say at the most probably 12 colors for one of these charts because it's just going to get really tedious. A 12 color chart is going to have 144 squares. So, you know, just to kind of give you an idea of how much you're going to be mixing there. Okay, if things go according to plan, you should have an 8x8 grid within this area. Let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And here we're going to have room to put our colors. And we can go ahead and start painting. So I haven't done anything to these colors yet. Sometimes um, you might want to spray them or put a little drop of water on each pan to get them going. Um, as I recall from praying colors, they really usually don't need any sort of priming. Make sure your uh, paper, is, your tape is down good. You can use a tissue to run your fingers over them if you wear lotion so you don't get that on your paper. And we will begin. I'm going to start off with red. Oh, that looks like it's coming up really nice. Okay, so I'm going to put red up here in this top section and also right there. Now, to do the mixing chart, we kind of go, where would these two meet? They would meet that one, and this one would meet here. So this, we're going to notice a column down the center diagonal that is the pure color. All right, so now we'll go to the next color. We're going to go to orange. We'll put one here. We'll put one here. There's only eight colors, so probably don't need to label them, but you can always go in and label them, especially if you're using other watercolors where the colors aren't that apparent. So this color, if we follow them in the chart, this is where they would meet and be the full color. So what I like to do for doing my mixing charts is that um, like on the top row, I will see whatever color is on the top. So if I'm going to be mixing that color plus that color to get the color here, I'll use mostly the orange because that's the top is orange. So I'll have it lean towards whatever colors on the top a little bit more. And I'll add a little bit of the red to it. And I'm going to put that right in there. And then here where we've got, um, we've got red to orange, I'll have this one lean a little bit more to red because that red's on the top. Does that make sense? Or you could do one where you've got one paler and one darker. It doesn't really matter, but it just since you're painting the same color twice, basically, you just want to make sure that they're a little bit different, just so you can see the variety of mixes that you can get. So the next color that we're going to have would be yellow. So we'll put our yellow up here. We'll do a yellow on this side of the chart. Our yellow right here where it mixes. And so, because it's the same exact color, because we're we basically just follow the lines on the chart to figure out what our colors are going to be. And so now I can do yellow and red. So I'll do mostly yellow and I'll do a little bit of red. 
that's kind of a pretty peach color. We'll put that right there. Now, um, where yellow and red meet over here, I'll put a little bit more red into that. So you'll just see like the, the two different mixes, how you can get a different shade. Hopefully that makes sense. And I can do that for the orange. First I'll do a little bit of orange. Right here. Maybe a little bit more, that's barely tinting the yellow. And then for this one I'll do a lot more orange. That will give you a really good idea of what is capable with these colors. I'll do the green. And right here where they would cross paths with each other. And then we'll mix our colors. So I'm going to start with some green there. And the first color I add to it is red. And I'll do just a little bit of red because I'm up on the top. Maybe a tint, just a touch more. And that will make us a grayish green. Now over here where the red's at the top, I'll do it a little bit more red. Just so you can kind of see the two different grays that you would get in that situation. Hold on a second, I think I need to explain myself. When I'm talking about complementary colors, I am referring to colors that are across one another on the color wheel. I made this color wheel up with our Prang paints to uh, show an example here. So let me just put this overlay on here and I'll link up the uh, stamp set and die set that makes these color wheels in case you're interested in the video description. If I have red, its opposite is green. So if I mix red with green, I'm going to get a gray. See, red and green, I'm going to get a gray. If I mix orange and blue, they're opposite, I'm going to get a gray or I'm going to get a brown. If I have more orange in it, which is my warmer color, it's going to be more brown. If I have more blue in it, which is my cooler color, it's going to be more gray. Let's say I wanted to paint a yellow lemon and I wanted to have a nice natural shadow on that lemon. What I would do is I would add a little bit of its opposite to make my shadow color, which would give me a very neutralized yellow that would be a perfect shadow color. So the reason you want to know this is because it can help you create really convincing neutrals. So rather than just adding black to any of your colors for a shadow, you're going to get a much better shadow on that lemon. So this would look much more natural shadowing your lemon than just adding black to it. The other thing that's really important to know, and I'm going to remove the little grid on here so you can see. The other thing to know is when you're mixing colors and you want your colors to be vibrant, you want to mix with colors next to each other on the color wheel. If I want orange, I'm going to take, um, or I want a yellow orange, I'm going to take my orange and my yellow. I'm always going to grab colors that are close to each other to mix the color that I want if I want a bright color and I'm going to grab colors that are further away from the color I'm using if I want to have a muted or neutral color. I hope that helps. Now back to our color chart. Now we'll do the green and some yellow. First we'll do it with um, a little bit of yellow so it's mostly green. Oh that's a beautiful color. Oh shoot I put it in the wrong spot. Hold on. I'm gonna blot that. That will happen. That's okay. It's okay because I said so. So green and yellow. I skipped the orange. We'll go back to orange. And then we'll do one with a little bit more yellow in it. So let's pick up some more yellow, add it to that mix. All right, and now we'll do one with orange. I gotta clean. Oh no, I have one little spot left before I have to clean my palette. So we're green there. We'll add a little bit of orange to it. A little bit more. Oh, that's a kind of a nice olive color. And then we'll do more orange. And we'll get a nice brown color here. That's pretty. All right, now I'm gonna clean my colors and I'm, we're gonna continue on through the other colors in the um, in the set. So that didn't take too long. We've got four done. It's going to take a little bit longer as we go because we're going to be uh, filling in more colors, but I think it gives you a good idea of how you can 
test your colors out and that way um, you don't have to guess when you're going to mix. Okay, our next color that we're coming to is blue. So again, blue up here, oh, that's a pretty color. Blue up at the top, blue at the side. The thing I loved about Prang paints is they were so much more vibrant than like other um, scholastic types of paints. So it really gave children a feel for what nice watercolors were like. So I'm gonna get some blue here on my mixing area. And we'll go with the red first. We'll start off by putting a little bit of red in. Uh, there, so we get a very muted purple. Then we'll do one with a little bit more red. And we'll put it down here where the red's at the top. So basically, the way I remember it, the way that I um, remember what color to add is if I am I am looking at the color at the top of the chart and that's what I'm using as my as my more dominant color. But you know you can you can do it however you want. Just make it so it's useful to the way you want to create. Okay, so now we got blue and orange. Oh, that's gonna be a really nice brown, I predict. Get some orange here. Ooh, look at that. That makes a really actually makes a really good gray. That's beautiful. What a nice natural looking gray. And now I'm gonna add some more orange to it, and that will probably brown it up a little bit more because brown really is kind of like a uh, an orange color. Most browns have like an orange undertone. And there we go with that. The tape is going to keep this nice and neat, hopefully. Next color would be blue and yellow, so we'll get another... Oh, got our yellow first. Let me get my blue. We'll add a little bit of yellow to that. And we'll do that here. Oh, isn't that pretty? It's a pretty teal color. We'll add a little bit more yellow. And that will come over here. That's nice. That's a nice natural green, actually. And now we'll do blue and green. So we will take our blue. We'll add some green to it. Actually, I think I need a little more blue in that. That's really looking green. A little more blue to that. And then we'll add a little more green. That green's very strong. That's a pretty color too. All right, now I'm gonna clean my, pal my uh, palette off again. I like how this plastic does not bead up. Now, uh, Prime watercolors are very affordable, so if you are, if you missed out on the box and you wanna purchase these, they're very inexpensive. They're between five and $10. Usually you can find them at any office supply store. That's a gorgeous purple. Or um, any office supply store or department store that has like an office supply section. They're just so much more vibrant than Crayola or Rose Art. And um, they might be a little bit more expensive, but you know, not bad. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, is purple and red. So let me get some purple out there. That's probably the strongest color so far. Add some red to it. Add a little more red. Uh, that would be right over here. That's beautiful. I almost feel like I want a little more purple in that one though. I'm gonna grab a little more purple to add to that one. Uh-oh. Just dropped, dripped a little in the wrong color. Very intense, good color for shadows because it's so dark. The next color we're gonna do is purple and orange. That's gonna make some mud, I think. Add the orange in there. Now we'll do a little more orange for that spot. Next color we're gonna do is purple and yellow. Let's get purple out. Grab some yellow. The colors are probably gonna get a little bit more intense as we go because um, the colors will have softened a little bit. This makes a beautiful gray. Look at that. A nice warm, uh, nice warm neutral gray. Do a little bit more yellow in there. That 
that's pretty. I, purple, purple is a great color to shade yellow things with because it just neutralizes it really naturally. I got purple and green. I'm gonna see if I can do that right there in that same spot. Uh, do a, some green. That's well, got a pretty color. Oh, look, isn't that surprising what color that made? Made like a really deep, uh, deep kind of, um, a deep almost indigo color. That's surprising, that made a beautiful indigo. And then with a little bit more green, we get more of like, um, almost like a neutral, like a desaturated teal color. That's interesting, I wasn't expecting that. Uh, we got purple and blue, so we'll get a purple down there. We'll add some blue. Ooh, it makes like a royal blue. Isn't that gorgeous? We'll do a little bit more blue. Yeah, it's just like such a clean blue. Look at that. It's like an ultramarine kind of, whereas the blue on its own was kind of like a phthalo blue. All right, the next color, we're going to clean off our thing again. All right, next color is brown. It's a nice brown. It's kind of like a burnt sienna. And then where they meet here. All right, now we'll do brown and red. Oops, didn't get very much there. Kind of makes like a potter's pink color. Add a little bit more red. That would make a nice, uh, that would be nice on skin tones. Uh, we'll do our brown and orange. First a little bit of orange. Ooh, that's nice too. It doesn't really affect the color all that much because orange has a lot of brown, or brown has a lot of orange undertones. We'll do it over here. We will do brown and yellow. I have two cups of water. I'm cleaning my, my brush in the dirty water each time and then picking up fresh water for my mix. So I'll add a little bit of yellow there. Oh, that's kind of nice. We'll add a little more yellow. Kind of a buttery color here. Now we've got brown and green. A little bit of green. That's interesting. It's kind of like a khaki. That's that would be useful in a lot of circumstances. Do a little bit more of that uh, that green. Just making sure I don't get myself mixed up in my order. That looks very similar. Maybe put a little bit more green in there. There we go. Now we're going to do brown and blue. That's going to make a nice gray, I predict. Mm, look at that. Nice dark brown, chocolatey brown. Now we'll add a little bit more of the blue to it. And it's much more of a neutral gray, so you can cool it up by adding more blue. It's kind of like the ultramarine blue and burnt sienna mix that we do. Add more blue, you're going to get a cooler um, gray. Add more brown, you're going to get a warmer, just darker, darker color there. Now we've got brown and purple. I feel like I need a little bit more of that. I think that's too much. Goodness gracious. So brown and purple. Oh, that's a nice rich color there. And then we'll do the one with a little bit more, a uh, little more purple in it here. It's kind of like a nice plum color. All right, we got one color left, and it is the black. So we're gonna clean our palette again. Oh, those are nice earthy autumn colors. Okay, black. We'll do black on its own first. 
Ooh, that's a really rich black. I'm surprised. That's the thing I like about the Prangs is that they're going to give you a much better experience with watercolor than like a Crayola's. So I'm going to get some black out and we'll add some red to it. This is what you'd call this a tint when you take a um, when you take a color and add black. I'm sorry, they call that a shade. Goodness gracious, get your terms right, lady. And we'll do one a little bit. No, we'll do one a little bit more red in it for down here. All right, we'll do black and orange. Add a little more orange. Ooh, that's kind of pretty. I usually don't use black, so this is kind of interesting for me. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and make a bunch of little black spots so I can just mix them to them. There we go. Uh, we'll do yellow. Do a little more yellow. I also want to spread that out a little bit better. Now we'll do green. Oops. That wasn't enough. I think the green is one of the weaker colors. And we'll do a little more. That's pretty though. We'll do a little more green. Pretty. Uh, we'll do blue. Oh, that kind of makes like a Payne's gray color. A little more blue. Ooh, nice navy blue there. We'll do purple. And a little more purple. That's a nice rich dark because it's two of the two darkest colors here. We'll do brown. Oh, I forgot to fill in my black section there. We'll get to that. We'll do brown. We'll do a little more brown. And we'll just fill in by putting black in that last square that we forgot to put in. And before you take your tape off, you want to make sure this is dry completely. So go ahead and dry it with a hair dryer or just be patient and let it dry. If you use a hair dryer or a heat tool to dry it, the nice thing is, um, is that it'll help loosen the tape. So if the tape got a little stuck, it will um, make it a little bit easier to remove. Okay, now we can take our tape off and reveal our beautiful, <clears throat> our beautiful grid here. And I would put a line in just to show um, kind of where the grid, how the grid goes. So I'm going to take my fine liner here. I'm just going to write prang set of eight in the corner. And then I'm just going to draw a line here just to show that that was the, um, those were the colors we started off and how we mixed them. And so when you have a uh, grid like this, you can say, oh boy, I really need this beautiful color for a bird that I'm painting. How do I make this color? And I can look, oh, I take mostly blue and I take a little bit of yellow and that's going to, that's how I'm going to make that. If I wanted, um, Let's see if I wanted the one that was a little bit more green. If I like that color better, I'd say, oh, okay, it's mostly green with just a little bit of blue. Here I can see it's mostly blue with just a little bit of green. Because remember, we had our top colors be the most strong colors. So um, that's the way I like to do a mixing chart if I'm going to do one. You don't have to do it that way. You could do it where um, you just add water to the uh, the second square. So you have like this side would be paler, this side would be darker. Um, so do whatever is most useful to you. You. A couple of weeks
weeks ago I did this painting uh, as part of my sketchbook Sunday. I had a time lapse of it and a lot of people asked me if I would do this in real time. Since I recorded it as a time lapse I don't have that footage so I figured this would be a good opportunity to use these colors uh, which are student grade like scholastic color to recreate this painting I did with um, the Renaissance uh, artist grade watercolors. So that's what we're gonna do today. Um, I'm gonna move my chart and I'll show you how I use my chart um, while I am painting and how that could be useful to you if you are um, if you're a beginner and you're not sure how to do color mixing. It'll help you give an, get an idea of what is possible with your paint. So again I'm gonna use the side of the paper that looks a little bit more random and I'm gonna start by sketching with my uh, with my pen actually but you can use a pencil. I just wanted to use what was in my smart art box and this had pens so I figured that's what I would use. Um, and I'm gonna do the bird a little bit bigger so it will be really easy to see. I'm gonna start by making kind of a teardrop shape. I'm gonna make a really light circle because I am working with a pen here. <laughs> I don't want to make a mistake. Hopefully that shows up enough. I'm going to put the beak in and the eye. Um, just a few little uh, details. We've got the wing, the wing feathers, and the tail. Those are basic bird shape. I do have a, a course on painting birds. If you want a little bit more information on that, get the feet. And that's pretty much all we need. Now, these Stabilo fine liners are not waterproof, so um, I'm expecting them to kind of dissolve as I'm painting, which is what I want. So um, I'm going to put a little, couple little branches in here, real sketchy, so that I'll be able to put some little leaves as well. But there, we've got a, we've got a basis for our, for our drawing here. Use a pencil if that's more, if you're more comfortable with that. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to look at my painting. I'm like, hmm, I like these colors here. How am I going to find those colors? So I can bring my, my swatch right over here and say, oh well, that color, the blue on its own, is like this color in here. This mix here, the blue and the green, uh, blue and the yellow, gives me some of that color. The um, uh, I don't like the, this color when I put more blue in it, so I'll probably go with the blue and the green um, rather than adding more yellow because yellow is a little bit more opaque and it gets a little muddy. So I can look at my chart and see what colors are going to give me the best effects. I also want to get these metallics open because I think that bronze, the coppery color, will be nice in the wings and give it a little bit of an iridescence as will the blue. So I'm going to set those out as well. You can see my whole table practically. <laughs> there. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wet the bird. Now you can see the white bristles on my brush have been stained from those paints. That's fine. That happens with the white bristle brushes. Um, it's just kind of nature of the beast. And you can kind of see as I am wetting this that fine liner is dissolving which I'm okay with, but if you don't like that, like I mentioned, use a pencil. I actually really like the way this looks where it's dissolving. I think it's kind of a happy accident. It looks kind of cool. I thought about just bringing it, I, you know, I think I'm going to bring it into the beak because I can go uh, later with a, um, uh, with a black and wash over that or even go back in with my fine liner if I want to. So I'm just basically wetting um, the chest and the back where before we get into the wing feathers. I actually just like the way it looks with just the toning there too. Okay so now I'm going to take the blue by itself. I usually like to kind of mix it out on my, I'm going to scoot this over a little bit. I like to mix it out on my palette a little bit just to make sure I've got, I don't have any clumps and my brush is fully loaded and I'm gonna just put some of that in there. I really like the way pranks flow too, so um, that's another reason I recommend it for uh, for students, especially when you you know you don't maybe you don't live somewhere where you can find. We have a good art supply option, and for teachers because it's just such a nice a nice paint to get started with. So I know if I add a little bit of yellow to this, I'm gonna get a really pretty um, I'm gonna get a really pretty teal. So I'm going to do a little bit of that up here. But I don't want to add too much yellow because I know that that's going to make more mud. And I'm going to add a little green to that because I know that color is nice and vibrant. I can add just a little blue. 
And I find these colors do mix pretty well, so you're not kind of stuck with muddy mixes. There's not a lot of colors, but I think starting with a limited palette is, um, is a good idea. I like the way the paints flow on this paper too, it's got a really nice look to it. And I'm still just using the paintbrush that came in this, um, this set of paints. I think I want a little bit stronger of color, so I'm going to do the stronger, just the blue with less water and the green with less water, and I'm going to add that to some of the edges. And I think I am going to go to the smaller brush now and just kind of draw in some of those little wispy, wispy feathers. Because right now all I have is just the, uh, the, the pen pretty much there. So I do want to have a little bit of that on the edges just to show that this is all feathers. Okay. I grab a little bit of blue on its own, add a little bit of uh, darkness up here around the beak and the forehead. And just a little bit under here as well. And if you put the paint in thicker, like I'm doing here, it's not going to flow as much. So if I just have like kind of very little water on my brush and I go in there with it, it's not going to spread out as much as it will if I have it already mixed down kind of like that skim milk consistency. Now if I do want to brighten this up a little bit of yellow, what I want to do is grab the yellow kind of on its own so it can mix on the paper because I don't want it to get muddy before it gets to the paper and I would just go in selectively probably on top of areas I had green uh, because it's less likely to make so much mud over green if I look here if I look at what the green and the yellow does the green and the yellow makes a nice fresh citrusy color but the yellow uh, if I mix it with too much blue I get I start to get that kind of uh, olivey color which I don't really want on this bird Now, I think I want to try some of this. I don't know if I was supposed to pre-wet these large pans. Oh, they seem to be liquefying pretty well. But I might just kind of throw in some of this metallic into the wet and wet. I might just go ahead and put some metallic on, dry, uh, on top after it's dry. But I thought that might be kind of pretty to have it mix in with the wet and wet. Usually metallics look best over dark, but um, actually I might as well just put some water on that anyway. Let them soften up a little bit. And with metallics, it's a good idea to let them um, to let them dry out completely before you close them back up again. So if you're going to put them back in that plastic clamshell packaging, I would make sure they're dry first. I'm just going to put in a little bit of that. I'm not sure if I like it, but I'm just going to play with it and experiment. Now another thing I want to do at this point is to scrape. So um, I'm just going to grab a little piece of um, old gift card or credit card. I'm going to go ahead and scratch in some of these feathers. So depending on uh, how your paint has sunk in and the type of paper you're using and how long it's dry, you might get dark lines and you might get light lines. And you can even get both in the same in the same area, like I was getting some lighter lines here over the beak and darker ones over the uh, like the brown and the yellow. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry and I am going to grab some brown and I'm going to start to add some lines in here for the wings. Put a little bit on the tail there. I can go ahead and add some coppery color in there. I think that will give it a kind of a pretty, a pretty look. Now I can see if I want a yellow ochre color, if I take brown and I take yellow, look at that, that's going to give me a yellow ochre. I just need more yellow than brown. If I have more brown than yellow, I get more of like a uh, raw umber color. So I'm going to mix that up on my palette. So I'm going to take yellow first and then grab a little bit of brown. Brown is way stronger, so I need more yellow. And that gives me a nice neutral color that I can go in and, uh, and add in in places that I want like a kind of a yellow ochre look. I 
and you can let uh, let portions dry. In fact, that probably wouldn't be a bad idea, but I kind of like it when those when wet edges hit each other and sometimes you get the soft blur. And I'm going to use my credit card scraper again and I'm going to just scrape in some of these wing shapes. And I'm going to try to squeegee it out a little bit too so I get a little nice uh, nice effect there. And I'm going to grab a little bit of black. I think I'm going to go with my smaller brush here. Oh, that's purple. That's another reason to make a chart because sometimes when your colors are wet it's or, or just in your palette it's hard to tell what you have. So I'm going to go with a little bit of black here. Now I typically don't use black but when you're with a limited palette like this you've got to take advantage of whatever you have. And once you've used it somewhere in your painting, it's easier to integrate it elsewhere. Like in the other one I did, I didn't use black. I used a mixture of, uh, I think I used Thalo Blue and uh, Burnt Umber. I'm going to grab a little blue. And add some of that into the belly as well. And also add a little bit of green. Add a little green into the wings. I like to add color into my neutrals. It just gives them a little bit more life. Rather than them just being black or brown. And I'm just going to bring some of the shadow up to meet the fluff on top. Get a nice shadow under that wing. Drag out some of the color to give it a little bit more fluffiness. And I'm going to go ahead and do the legs black. and also get the beak. Hopefully it's dry enough. And I try to leave just a little sliver of white just to give it a little highlight. And same with the eyes. We do have that white charcoal pencil that we can use though. So this layer has got to dry before we do anything else to the bird, but while we're waiting, we can go back to our bigger brush and we can paint the branches and I am going to just wet them. And you can see how it's activating the fine liner, which is fine by me. I don't mind having like like colors from the the painting swirling into background elements. I think it looks kind of cool. Um, I'm going to grab some brown. See, we've got really nice flow with this paint, <clears throat> even for a student color. I probably shouldn't have that going out of his head, but. Yeah, well. Okay. If I want some of that yellow ochre color, I can add that in as well. Put some of that up here. Maybe another branch over there. We'll just freehand that one in. And you can put whatever you want for leaves or flowers. I'm just going to do some simple leaves. Give it a very loose, loose look. Um, I'm going to just uh, we'll do a few different colors. Uh, you could use a flat, if you have a flat brush, you can use a flat brush. I'm just going to use what's in the kit. And just do some, just kind of some fluid strokes for my leaves. Loose and fun. I really think the paper makes more of a difference than the paint when you are doing watercolor. So I'm glad they sent a better quality paper and a cheaper paint. 
Sometimes they have pass boxes for sale um, on their website if they have any inf leftover inventory. So if you do want this kit, you can uh, you might be able to find a pass box. If not, I will link up um, I will link up these supplies separately so you can find them a la carte somewhere else. And if you want a surprise, of course, you can subscribe to Smarter Box and you can get a, uh, a surprise in the mail every month. Do something fun and new to try. All right, I'm gonna do some spattering. I did that on the other painting. I really like the way it looked. Usually I like to have a, a bigger brush for this, but you definitely can do it with the, the brush in the kit. I think the spattering gives you the impression of having um, further away leaves. It just gives it a fuller look. Sometimes I'll just kind of go in there and splash on big gobs of water and spatter into that and that will give me a uh, that'll give me a nice loose flowy look. This paper is not even buckling and I haven't taped it down and I do have quite a bit of water on there. It would be easier with a bigger brush just because a bigger brush holds more more uh, pigment. Okay. I'm going to dry this and then we're going to go back and put our final layer on the bird and finish up. I'm going to go in with the black fine liner and I am going to just go in and add those darkest details. Um, I do intend on going in with a little bit more paint so just kind of keep that in mind if you're going to use paint on top that the fine liner will bleed. but I find that you can add quite a bit of, um, of detail this way. Now on the original piece um, that I showed you before we began, I actually used some colored pencil uh, towards the end of that. So I'm not gonna be using that on here because I'm using what's in the kit, but that's certainly if you have colored pencils at home and you want to do that, you totally can. The fine liner is great for any of those really fine lines that you want to add, obviously. Sometimes you lose um, detail or sketchiness in there and it's a great way to bring it back. It is a water soluble product. It's very similar to watercolor. Okay, so now I am gonna use a little bit. I'm gonna use my just my small brush so I don't end up over affecting anything. I'm gonna take, because I'm looking here, I want kind of an indigo color and I look and I see that if I take the purple um, and I mix it with green, I get a nice indigo. And also if I take the purple and I mix it with blue, I get a nice royal blue. I think I'm gonna add, I think I'm gonna do the purple and blue. So I've got, per, I've got my blue, I'm gonna take some purple. That's gonna give me a nice ultramarine blue kind of color and I can add some of that into some of my shadowy feather areas to kind of uh, perk it up a little bit, make it a little bit more, um, more vivid because these are not as vivid as the artist quality paints that I did my original one with, but I wouldn't expect them to be. I mean, these cost like $5, so they're, they're not gonna, they're not gonna be the same. And that really, I feel like that really gave it a lot of, um, a lot of life too. So sometimes, and you know that because you made your charts, you can see where you're gonna get those colors that you're looking for. I'm gonna get some teal by mixing blue and green. And I'm gonna add that in some of these areas. I'm using that smaller brush. And now I'm just gonna go in with my metallics 
and they should be nice and soft and ready to go because remember we put some color we put some water on the pans and I am just going to throw in some pretty strong um, strong strokes on the wing feathers so that I can get that kind of like iridescent look and I can put a little bit in here too do the same with the um, with the blue birds have a beautiful iridescent quality and if you put them if you layer them on top of the dry paint they're going to glow a little bit more because they show up better on on top of darker surfaces some of this in the tail Okay, and I really want to try out that white pencil, but I need to dry it. Otherwise, it's not going to stick. So let's dry this really well. Okay, and we'll give this pencil a try. And I think I want to do like uh, a little bit of highlight up here. Make sure if you're making little marks, you're going with the direction of the fur, of the feathers rather. So I used a little gel pen on my other one, or paint pen, I can't remember which. Uh, so I'm using this white pencil in place of that. It's always good to, to use what you have, you know, substitute. If you don't have exactly what I'm using, find what you have that's closest and use that. You can probably put a little bit of a, sh a highlight on the top of the beak too. And around the eye. All right, I think I'm gonna call this one done. And uh, there you can see it. Um, I it's not obviously not as vibrant as the one I did with my um, Renaissance Artist Watercolor, but I don't think it's bad. And if you can get a set of, of paints for five dollars and you know get a very similar look, then I say go for it. So whatever you have for paints, try making a mixing chart. I think you'll find that it is a very useful tool, especially if you're not. Um, that great at mixing colors yet and you don't have a lot of colors it can really just show you ways to uh, put your colors together to create um, new vibrant shades now this is just a two color mixing chart obviously you can try mixing three colors four colors and see what you get um, I will tell you though, when we're looking at our mixes, they're already pretty muted and that's pretty typical with student colors. They generally use more dyes or pigments than single pigment colors that you would get from an artist grade watercolor. So you might not want to mix three colors together um, unless you're looking for really neutralized tones. So I mean, you can even see you're getting plenty of beautiful neutrals in here um, with just a two color mix and uh, you get a really nice variety. So I encourage you to play with the watercolors you have, try making a chart. You don't have to use tape. You can just draw with a pencil and fill in the blocks. Um, I was kind of uh, curious to try it after I'd seen a few other YouTubers make their charts with tape and I saw oh, that looks so sharp. Um, and so that's what I did. Uh, I hope you found this useful. If you would like to get a surprise set of art supplies in your mail every month, consider subscribing to Smart Art Box. You can find them at smartartbox.com. They have, you can buy a one-time gift box. If you just want to try it once, you can subscribe for three months, six months, whatever you like. Um, you, the box price does go down a little bit the longer you subscribe so um, and they do ship to a lot of countries worldwide and you can find out all the information on their website which I will link up below please give me a thumbs up if you like this tutorial thank you so much for watching until next time happy crafting